more about two-stroke porting. Why do people want to change the porting on their engines? Mostly to get more power or to shift where the power is emphasized. That's uh, where in the RPM range it is emphasized. If you look at this uh, dyno of some common 125 motocross bikes, you can see they, they all have a nice a nice form to the to the dyno. Some of them sign off early, some of them sign off late. Okay, right about there, there, and there is the end of the pipe power band. Okay, which you can figure out using this uh, formula. This is in millimeters and this is in um, inches. So this is a, a drawing. Um, just an estimation of the way I, I see the power due to the porting without the emphasis of an expansion chamber. A typical expansion chamber has about a two and a half thousand RPM spread, which would put it about right here. So yeah, this last boost right here is due to the pipe. But this the, the height of it right here is due to the, the porting. It's peak power RPM. So the idea for the highest peak power is to make this match whatever that is uh, about... 750 RPM before the end of pipe power band. 750 comes back here. That's where you want the peak power RPM of the porting. And I don't have any easy formulas to figure out the peak power RPM. I had to design a Excel spreadsheet. And in this spreadsheet, you can enter all the widths of the port, which is every millimeter down, down the port. The date of the bore and the stroke, the exhaust duration, the transfer duration, the height above those two ports, or set of ports. The total width of the transfers, and then you just click calculate, and right here it will tell you the peak power RPM, which is when this green line crosses the 1.0 line, that RPM. And the red shows you uh, when it crosses the 1.0 line, when it's starting to interfere with the transfers. In other words, uh, s still have somewhat of some combustion pre pressure present when the uh, transfers open. So it's kind of a complex calculation. So I haven't even tried to see if it's possible to make a simple formula to come up with a way to figure that. It's only a $10 program. And how to use Excel? It's so easy. You just download it and then you open up your Excel program on your computer and you go to file and you go to open and then you you choose the uh, the Excel spreadsheet that you want to use wherever that is. If it's in downloads, I don't know wherever you put it. You know, and it's just that easy. Then once it shows, my spreadsheets are set that all the light blue cells are in are the input cells. That's where they accept new data. Okay, and so if you know i never used excel before until just about 10 years ago it's really pretty easy yeah so the whole idea is use the program to find out that peak rpm and if you want the best peak power make sure it's in in harmony with 750 rpm before the end of the power band which 
is this formula right here. Okay. So that's the best peak power. What if you wanted to lower that peak power and give it more oomph in the, uh, the mid-range? Well, strictly speaking, mid-range is all the way down here because that's 6,000 and that's 12,000. Upper mid-range, this area right here. Um, so if you have a, a motocross bike you want to turn into a trail bike, you would have to lay the cylinder base down, which lowers the uh, open port area of the transfers, which is going to shift that peak power RPM to the left, which is what you would want to do. And you might want to lengthen the header on the pipe also, which would also shift it to the left. But that's what you do. You know, it's a it's a combination of the two. There's there's two there's two power bands or two power peaks from the porting and from the pipe. So just a few other little notes I wanted to throw in. Um, you know, but that, that's the main thing is just realizing there's there's two. RPM peaks, that of the porting and that of the pipe. Those two combined give you the final result. So uh, that's an engineering kind of approach to separate things accordingly. So step three here is increasing the exhaust ports. Width will decrease the need for blowdown degrees but the width should not exceed 70% of the cylinder bore when measuring straight line from left to right or 80% of the bore when measuring the port width on paper that was pressed onto the port edges. So it's talking about this width right here. Be you know, because if it's too wide, the rings are going to bow out more into the exhaust port um, and then when they they come down here it's going to be like instead of a smooth transition they're going to be like hitting and they could also do a bit on the same at the top of the port if that's fairly flat right there which you don't want to do when you when when the rings are hitting it will wear the ring down to have like a bevel and it it can't hold high cylinder pressure when that happens. The top of the exhaust port can made, be made more flat to also decrease blowdown degrees needed. I guess I should re-emphasize what blowdown is. It's the time and degrees between um, the exhaust opening and the transfers opening. The idea being that has to be sufficient enough for the exhaust for the combustion pressure to almost completely be uh, eliminated when that transfer opens because what's the, the crankcase pressure is only like 5 psi and the combustion pressure is over a thousand pounds so it's got to have time to be relieved and one other thing I want to emphasize is that uh, the transfers mostly set the peak power RPM. This is only this only exists to set the correct blowdown. Okay, of course, if there's insufficient blowdown, you're going to lessen the peak power RPM that the transfers are capable of. If it has too much blowdown, uh, it's going to limit the power of the engine because it's limiting the size of the engine. The true working size of a two-stroke engine is the trapped area above the exhaust port. But, you know, when you, you buy a, a motorcycle, they measure it by the swept area of the piston from TDC to BDC. And that's the four-stroke method, which is stupid to me to use on a two-stroke. That's the way they do it.
So yeah, like I was saying, if you, if you like this shape right here, very roundish, see that right there? That's typical for street or trail. If you want to turn a trail bike into a motocross bike, you want to raise that up here so that this right here is has a longer flat section and from here to here is is wider also okay when it comes to the boost port the magic number is 30 percent the width of this boost should be 30% of the total width of the transfers. This width plus this width, and then to the other side, the same. We're just, you know, add those two together, multiply by two, and then multiply by 0.3 to get that boost width. And this only comes into play when people are, you know, mod highly modifying their engines. Maybe they think their boost width is not enough. They go over the 30% and they'll realize it was enough. So hold to the 30% rule. Then there's the thing about the crankcase compression ratio. I don't know if I should, if I really should have added that in here because the topic is about porting. But there is a free calculator that you can download at this website of mine. And it has to do with the crankcase compression ratio and the maximum delivery ratio RPM, which should jive with the peak power RPM. Okay. Yeah. Uh, matching. Make sure the ports, the transfer ports are matching. That means that they both, they, on both sides, they, they open at the same time. And you can look at the top of a piston and it's the irregular pattern found on top of a piston will tell you how uh, well matched the transfers are. This side right here has more clean area so this side of the transfers is opening a little bit earlier than this side. This is where the, the boost port is, and this is where the, the transfers are. And if the transfer roof angle is too steep, you may not get any wash. This may all be black, because that wash happens when there's a good uh, intake charge hitting the, the piston top. I forgot to mention that that just to give a visual of what that formula is for determining the top RPM of the pipe is from where the piston is, center line, through the header, through the diffuser, to the end of the belly, that distance. So one last thing, when you see a chart like this or you got any listing a chart that has to do with durations and top RPM or peak power RPM. That is only for that type of engine. It depends upon the port widths, the shape and the width of the exhaust port and of the transfers. So there's no such thing as a good, accurate, dependable universal chart for durations and RPM. Forget it. It doesn't exist. Because when you figure out what an engine is doing, it has to do with the port size and the durations. Both. And these charts do not list area of the ports. So I just wanted to throw that in. And I guess that's all I have to say for right now. Boarding. It's great. Try it.